Yep. All right. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, Scott and I, we get a lot of questions from people who are getting into climbing DRT and they're searching for the type of rope that we use. Um, we use uh, Samson Predator 11.4 millimeters, what we're using, but there's a lot of other uh, ropes out there that are available that'll work fine with DRT, but it's important to get the right type of rope to climb DRT. Um, I'll let Scott talk more about that, but what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of show you, Scott's going to talk about um, the things that he looks for in a good climbing rope, um, and then he's going to show you um, how to navigate Westburst site to look at all the different types of rope that they offer. Um, there's also other, uh, there's other um, arborist supplies that you can check out, but um, there's, you know, Samson Predator is not the only rope that you can use. We just like it because it's kind of the perfect fit. Well, it's camo. It's yeah. camo. Yeah. We like it for that factor, you know, mainly for that factor. You know, there's a lot of other ropes out there that have the same qualities as it, but uh, it's hard to find a rope that's camoed. Um, okay, so pretty much what I'm going to show you, I'll show you a list of uh, a bunch of ropes you can go on the Westboro site, and uh, so you can check them all out yourself. Um, but the, the problem is, is that they're not camo. So if you're looking for a camouflage rope and you can't get Predator, I mean, you, you, know, you might be able to get you something close, but I think you're going to have to wait. Um, One of the things that's important that you taught me is that there's a difference. I think a lot of guys who don't know a whole lot about rope, um, you know, I say, what's the difference between static and dynamic? And um, I'll let you talk about that, Scott. But uh, there's, I think, if I'm if I'm correct, the more static a rope is, sometimes the less uh, you lose a little bit of the knot characteristics of it. Is that yes? Is, um, that I mean, accurate? static is uh, the the difference in in static and dynamic is is you know think of it as you know static being a cable and dynamic being a rubber band. You know, so dynamic is going to stretch more. Um, it's a lot more forgiving um, in case of, you know, I don't want to say a fall, a, a long fall, but, uh, but, you know, the rope gives, so it doesn't shock the body as much as, as a static line would. Um, as far as different climbing styles, um, that's why SRT, you really want to kind of lean towards a static line because you don't want that stretch when you're, when you're ascending the rope with mechanical ascenders. You want it to be static. Um, it, it's less work on, on you, on your body as well. Um, just think the rope keeps stretching, and as you keep advancing up that rope and, and you're stretching yeah, it's like two, you're climbing. 3%, 4%, right. 5%, you know, it's more work for you. So static line always appeals more to this SRT guy. The DRT guy, uh, you want a little bit more dynamic in it, you know, because as you're, as you're, as you're going up, yeah, you don't want it super dynamic where the same thing, you're working too hard to get to that height, but at the same time, we're only going up 20, 25, 30 feet maximum. So, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, in the trade where you threw a throw ball 70, 80 feet in the tree and you had to pull yourself up. Um, you know, you didn't want too much of a dynamic line because it made it, made it feel more like you were pulling yourself up 100 feet. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the difference between those two, uh, those two lines, and as far as uh, as far as what's available out there, um, I don't know if you want to jump in front yeah, of the camera. Yeah, I'll look so. at the camera and make sure that, that you can see it. I don't know. Here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spin this around so you can see. Look here, Scott. You can look right there. All right, but can you zoom in on that enough to where that they can read it? I mean, what I'm going to have to do is kind of stand somewhat in front of it. So I can't really see it, Joe, so you tell me. Right, hold on a minute here. Bear with us, guys. We're just going to try and zoom in so you can... just want to make this easy for everyone. Okay. Well. Okay, there you go. Right All there. right. So, so when you're in search for a rope, you can't find Predator Line or it's not a, available at this time. If you go on the Westper site, um, you know, this is it, and it lists 
climbing gear, tree rigging, rope, whatever, climbing kits. Um, just go hit right on climbing gear. All right, and this will take you. Okay, tree climbing equipment, tree climbing kits, harnesses, spurs, lanyards, climbing rope. You want to hit on climbing rope. Or said climbing line, right? Yeah. Okay. Arborist climbing rope. Okay. So I guess now SRS it has uh, taken over SRT. Yeah. So SRS um, kind of mean, means the same thing as SRT. Yeah, pretty much right. Say, I mean, we were single rope technique. Um, <laughs> this now is. Uh, Stationary well, rope systems. Yeah, they're, they're replaced they, they, it with that. They say that. like when they say DDRT, that's actually double dynamic. Right. Uh, rope, uh, techni rope technique. Rope technique. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So anyhow, SRT, SRS. Okay. If you hit on that, come on. All right. And this will list all the ropes that are good for SRT. Okay, this axis line, HTP static. That's a bit small, three eighths. You probably want to stay away from that. Yeah, we. All okay, right, I would say seven sixteenths and up. Yeah, explain I, that I, because it's the rope is bigger in your hands. Right, you're exactly. You have something to grab onto. Grab. I mean, with you know, if, if you're climbing with a petzl, a sender, um, you're really not holding the rope anyhow your rope is in the handle of the ascender but i always tend to stay listen bigger is always better as far as i'm concerned um it might be a little bit more weight to carry in if you're using a heavier but not that much not right? that much no you know but like i said you can just go through any rope that's seven sixteenths and up so now that you know, where you are now this is all your your srt ropes this is all ropes for, for srt and as you can see you know there's a lot of them there's a lot to choose from yeah. Okay. And there's a, a lot of, if you notice, a lot of these colors are a little bit more bright. Well, they're bright because of it being in that industry. You yeah. want a bright rope because right. the last thing you want to do is cut it with your saw. Right. So that's why your ropes are always going to be on the, yeah, uh, a, on a much more, yeah, neon, brighter, yeah, something, you know, you something that stands out from the tree that you're in. So now if you wanted okay. rope for So if we DRT. want to go rope for DRT, yeah, phone's working great today. Okay, so this is any 20, you know, 24 strand climbing line ropes, you know, we'll hit on those first. So, you know, you guys, I'm not going to read through all of this, but it just breaks it down what a 24 strand is. Now, any of these 24 strand ropes in this, in this, um, section here these will all work these are for all DRT. work for DRT right okay. so you're gonna have to decipher you know what what you guys want as far as color goes um, you know what, what you think is gonna work best for you if you want something that's not gonna stand out too much you know yeah but thought, any of these I thought they have Yale banded in there don't they someplace they I'm do pretty sure they have Yale they do in Westburn. they definitely do Here's a Yale rope right here too. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know some guys have been using that. It's the colors aren't too bad. Right. And um, I heard it works really well. Right. But there's a number. Like I said, you probably have, you know, ten, fifteen ropes for twenty-four strand. Okay, you can go back to sixteen strand ropes. Arbor Masters, Arbor Masters, Arbor Masters got a lot of rope. So you all should, of these will work. All of these will work, right. And the same thing in here, I'm pretty sure we'll find our predator line in here. I go by it. Is it under 16? or Maybe. No, I thought it was under 24. I That's sure. right, it is. It's a 24 strand of rope. Yeah. I didn't see it in that last right. file there, but... But also, you know what? I think they, if I'm not mistaken, I think they have it in the wrong spot. On they the do have site. it in the wrong spot because it's under, under 12. The, we found it under the 12, but right. it's a 24 It's a 24 strand. strand, right. There's not a whole lot of 12 strand out there anymore that's that's available, but, but, it, but it is a good climbing line. You know, it's a little more old school. It was kind of what was out there years ago. Would, would the, the higher the strand be a, a rope that tends to last a little bit longer? 
like you know can kind of take going over well the yeah, thing is like with a 24 strand um with a like well, like for instance, Predator is a double braid. Right. So you got an outer weave and an inner weave. Yeah. Okay. Your outer jacket is is your protection for your rope, and your inner, you know, your inner is more of a strength of the rope. Right. You know, I used to climb on this years ago. It's true blue. This stuff tends to stretch a little more. It's a little more dynamic. This I mean, twelve is it, strand. Does it not last as long? When um, less strand? No, no, it lasts. You know, because it's always that outer, it's that, you know, whatever they use on the outer jacket is, is where you're getting your abrasion from, you know, huh. your abrasion resistant from. But yeah, they may, they these ropes, the 12 strands, they may fuzz up more over use. You'll kind of notice, you know, um, a 24 strand is almost going to have like, a, almost like a waxy feel to it. Yeah. Just the way... Uh, the strands, the outer jackets on them today, they wear a, a lot better. So, you know, and they're, oh, of course, they're going to cost more, too. I mean, like you see here, you know, you're $128 for for uh, for 200 feet of this, you know. I mean, you can't even buy uh, 120 feet of uh, Predator for that price. Yeah. So now, all right, well, I'm going to back out of this. We'll just, because, you, you know, we kind of, I think we kind of showed them where you can, how you can navigate the site. And kind of look for what you need there um, what we get a, a lot of questions from guys asking about um, people have a lot of concerns about you know if you're climbing DRT um, you know how long will my rope last you know how much if I if I you know the guys are I guess when they're thinking about getting into this or you know they want some of these questions answered is it going to be cost effective to me is it going to be you know is it worth me spending the money to get into rope if i got to use a rope and i'm only going to be able to use it a couple of times or something so how yeah, you're how, going to get you're going to get a uh, you're going to get a lot of time out of it um and then again too you know, depending on what you buy a 24 like i said the 24 strands are going to last much longer than a 16 than a 12. um and just the outer jackets that they use on them now you know, they really stand up well. In, in the arborist industry, you know, you know, our guys are, are climbing on lines. They're getting, and, don't, and this is six days a week, okay, they're climbing on these lines. And, you know, they're replacing them. I mean, sometimes, you, you know, you'll do something where, of course, you're going to have more wear than others. But at a minimum, I would say these guys are getting, you know, eight, anywhere from eight months to a year. I mean, on the general rule of thumb is we, we, we tend to ch uh, change them out every year just to be on the safe side. Right. And that's a but guy. But don't forget, this is a also, lot of wear and tear with oil, right, gas. This is six days a week <laughs> climbing on them. Yeah. And going up numerous trees. You may do, you know, two, three large trees or, or 10, 15 smaller trees a day. Right. So it's getting a lot. And much higher those. heights too, right? Yeah, and also, right, 60, 70, yeah. 80 feet of height, right, exactly. Like you, know, you, were, you were saying, hundreds. explain so, to them about what you were saying about, you know, how like when you come, when you rappel down with your friction hitch, right. sometimes you're building up some heat and when you do yeah, that Yeah, well, the lot, faster, yeah, the faster you descend, the more heat you're going to build in that rope. Um, you know, if you were to come down that rope, and of course, again, we're coming down 20, 25, 30 right. feet. We're hunting, maximum. it's different. We're hunting, right, exactly. If you were to come down that rope from 70, 80 feet in the air, you know, on a hundred, on a hundred and fifty or two hundred foot line, you know, you're going to create a lot of heat. You're going to start melting fibers, right? And you'll notice the rope starting to get stiff and kind it starts of glazes to break. Over. Yeah, it glazes over. It starts to break down. Yeah. You know, and you have to replace it a hell of a lot sooner. Right. But at, yeah, at, at the height that we hunt at, and the same thing. You know, at the end of the day, when you're coming down, cause you're not really, uh, you're not really, you know, make uh, making enough friction to really heat up that rope on an ascend. Right. It's always on the descend, you know. I right. mean, you know, you Rambo out of that tree, you know, yeah. as fast as you can go to hit the ground, and you're going to heat it up, you know, yep. you're going to start uh, glazing that rope over a little bit. But, uh, you know, like anything, just take your time. Come like, down. Realistic. Come down in a real c controlled descent, you know. Right. And, uh, and like I said, I, I mean, I'm probably looking at, I don't know, two, three seasons. You know, before I even think about replacing that rope, mm -hmm. you know, and of course that's, you know, that's each, every, everybody else to look at their rope, inspect it daily, you know, anytime yeah. you use it, you know, you, you never know, you, there might be something, you might be up a tree where, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago, 
somebody had a, a fort in it and man, there's a nail up there. So, you know, something that's going to destroy your rope, you know, right, so, right. you know, you, you got to kind of to each his own, you know, every, yeah. every guy's got to inspect his rope. You got to use some, your own best judgment. Right, exactly. What, what things like, you know, what would you look for in your rope that says, eh, it's time to change it? You know, when, when you, when do you, when, when do you know, you say, eh, if there's something, what jumps yeah, out? Well, you? you know, you'd see a lot of wear, like I said, when it really starts to fuzz up, yeah. um, you know, then you might start thinking about it, you know, it's time. But more than anything, you'll, what you'll notice too, um, is that your your knot will tend to slip a little bit, right? You know, after over, over time of wear, right. and that's another thing too. I mean, even if you notice that, if you notice that after the first season of climbing on it, I mean, don't forget you got two ends, so just you know, the, flip it over, flip it over. You know, <laughs> I mean, I would do that anyway. Yeah, you know? if I put a whole season kind on rotated. one end of the rope and I'd rotate it and I put the carabiner tied to the other end, yeah. and then the following yeah. season put it back. Yeah. You know, but when you get to the point that, like I said, when a knot won't hold anymore, and I don't mean that it's just going to let you drop down. Yeah, it's, you know, when you get up to your height, you, you feel it you, kind of coming, yeah, you'll coming see, back. Yeah, you'll see it creep a little bit yeah. real slow. Yeah. And then it's it's kind of telling you, you know, yeah. it's 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 starting to wear in. And, right. You know, it's time to friggin' replace it. You know, you know I, I think the thing is too, like, you know, if you... You know, you think about an arborist that's doing it day in and day out, the, the kind of wear and tear that they're putting on that rope. Right. You know, Plus you're around gas, sharp objects oil, all day long. You know, right. you know yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. You know, and then you contrast that to how we treat our ropes in, in a hunting situation. Right. We're not going as high. No. We're always going kind of slow and quiet. Right. Right. Um, and we're so, keeping our ropes in a, in a really clean environment, too. Yeah. You know, I mean... You know, in the arborist industry, you should too, but I just, you know, what I see some days, it kind of just baffles my mind the way guys treat their ropes, you know, and I mean, yeah. that's your lifeline. Right. You know? I mean, one of the things here too is like, like, being this as a lifeline, I think it's always better to err on the side of caution. You know, li listen, when there's a doubt, you know, change it out. Right. But I, I can, I, I kind of feel like realistically, you know, these things will probably last you a really long time if yeah. you take kid care. Well, I have, I have you know, some. If you're not leaving it outside in the sun, no, if you're not no. getting in the rain. But to that regard, now I have. I'm trying to think what it is too. I don't know if it's a true blue line or a New England line, but but I have a rope I put in a tree. Oh my God. My oldest is 21, so I want to say maybe 17, 18 years ago. You yeah. know, for a swing. Yep. All right. And I was just out in the backyard the other day fooling around with, with my youngest kid. And I mean, you know, I have two, three kids pile on that thing. That's 17 years. I mean, granted, it's not, you know, you're not climbing up and down with it, right. but that rope's out in the weather. Right. You, know, uh, you know, 365 yeah. days a year. Yeah. The last 17 years. And, and it's still good. And it's still good. I mean, there's there's no, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I, where, I don't even, I don't even like when I see this kid swinging on it doesn't even click in my head to change it. You know, yeah. like think about it, oh man, it might break. Right. Yeah, that rope is solid. Right. You know? So that's the thing, like, you know, we we want to kind of like be cautious where, you know, we're gonna go and tell you that, you know, hey, it's a good idea to maybe change that rope out every every three years or so, you know, or anytime right. you see a sign of wear because yeah. you know we want you guys to be safe and yeah. and you gotta use your best judgment and right. change it out as you know, when in doubt change it out. But right. realistically it's gonna last, it could last you a long time. And it depends Absolutely. on how much you climb. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, that's what it all comes down to. I mean, we we use it probably more than most guys out there are using it, right. and we're probably gonna go and climb. D we don't climb DRT every single time we hunt. You no, know, we, we don't. you know we we use it in certain circumstances. Right. If we're going run and gun, and we're gonna do you know, yeah. I mean, well, I hunt. for instance, now you know our vacation time's coming up. You know, the last week of October, that'll start my vacation, um, and. You know, I'll, I'll probably I'll hunt from then till December. I mean, not straight through, but so I mean, even if I use my rope, if I use my rope even every day, okay? Yeah. You know, that's you know, what am I getting? Twenty, thirty hunts on that rope? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that's nothing, you know. Yeah. And the same thing, as long as I take care of it too. Right. You know, if I'm not burning out at the top of the tree, 100 miles an hour coming down, you know, where I'm creating a lot of friction and heat, and that's going to break down your rope over time. You know, and there's no reason to do that. And what are your thoughts too? Because we get a lot of people that talk about using those uh, the friction savers. And stuff the like cambium that. friction yeah. savers. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, I mean, that's saving 
you're 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 safeguarding the limb more than anything. You know, you're on public some parks or whatever they require it. You know, even you might have uh, parks that are open to hunting, bow hunting, and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I would imagine they would require it would be a requirement. So you're not, you know, you're not damaging the cambium layer of the tree. Um, but as far as uh, you know, I mean, like less I less heat on the rope. I mean, it's leather, so yeah. you know. I mean, it's I, it's you're still I, generating some heat. Like I said, I got, they're, they're more for you know tree saver, rope, right? You know? I've got a, a maple in my yard that I used to practice out of, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I, we started getting those questions, and you know, I'm new to it. I don't, you know, I'm just learning everything from you, and and you know, people started asking that question. I said, geez, you know, I wonder what the top of the side of that limb looks like. So I climbed up there to see, mm -hmm. and I climbed up that tree a lot of times practicing. Right, this when whole I practiced summer, my sure. bow, you know, and it's it's a little shiny, yeah. but it didn't damage it, no. you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, right. it 